Hey there, I am expanding the farm, but it's probably not why you think. I'm gonna get into all that today, my overall strategy moving forwards, and a little bit of an update on the farm. But before I get to that, I gotta plant some beets because you always gotta be planting. Well, beets have been a pretty consistent crop for me this year. Uh, they've been selling really well and been growing really consistently. I do want to make a video specifically about growing beets, but I not quite dialed it in 100% and you guys know how I am. I want to make sure I'm confident in what I'm recommending to you guys before I do that. But if you're looking for uh, really good beet seeds or just seeds in general, I highly recommend you check out Osborne Quality Seeds, which is today's show sponsor. Osborne is an incredible company, not only providing excellent seeds, but also great customer service. They really work with you to try to get the seeds to grow well in your context, and have really helped me a lot in the last few years, getting me things that have uh, you know worked really well, and uh, the, all the seeds I've got for them have been awesome. So there's links down below for you to check them out. I highly recommend you do that if you're looking for some seeds right now, or maybe in the future if you consider them, and I want to thank them for sponsoring this channel. Soil blocks have been doing great for me. Uh, I did a video about that, which I'll leave links for link to that video down below. And as I've been lately, any videos related, I will put them down below so you guys don't have to hunt around for them. I'm trying to be as helpful as possible here. But soil blocks have been awesome. I've seen a huge difference and uh, just in terms of transplant shock and plant health and I've been really loving it. So I just want to update you on that a little bit. Uh, and before we get into sort of the plans and stuff, which I mentioned before, uh, I did install a misting system in here, which you're probably going to ask me about. So uh, I just put this in and I will make a video on this for sure. I'm, so far it's been really cool, but I don't want to recommend everything until I use it for a while, as I said before. So now that I got this, these beets planted, let's talk about the expansion plans. The farm business has definitely been picking up lately. And if you've been following along on the channel, you know this is kind of what I predicted or expected to happen as I rebuilt the farm and started up this year. I also anticipated the restaurants would be opening back up and increasing their business. That's definitely been the case. I've been picking up more customers and really building those relationships. And it seems like every week they order more produce, which is awesome. But lately I've actually been shorting my customers a little bit. And frankly, that's not for me not being able to keep up. That's been not a problem with, you know, pulling crops out when they're done and flipping beds and replanting and staying on top of successions and all that kind of stuff. Generally that hasn't been the problem. One of the things that's been hurting me is that I had too many crops for the number of beds that I have and so I had to whittle down the crop selection. So now, right now I'm just basically growing lettuce, carrots, and beets and I still have a couple beds of those Italian sweet peppers which at this point I just want to harvest them because they've been in the ground so long. I don't know if I'd grow them next year just because they uh, they take up the beds for so long. Although I did get a crop of beets out uh, below those and some lettuce as well so that, that, that worked out really well. So the expansion is not because I'm running out of produce though. You're probably getting pretty curious by now why I would be expanding the farm if it wasn't for the reason of you know being short on produce for my customers. And I will get to that in a second, but this is YouTube, right? Aren't I supposed to like stretch this out as long as possible to keep you guys watching? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I will get to it in a second. But I wanna have a little bit of a disclaimer here. I want you to remember that the decisions that I make on the farm and for my business, they're what's best for me, my family and my farm business. And some of you guys might disagree with that and that's fine, but this is what's most important and what works for my context here. And I also wanna make a point that if you have a farm business or any sort of entrepreneurial situation, just because you have the opportunity and you can grow your business, it doesn't mean you should grow your business. I see this a lot, especially in the farming industry, where people grow their farms bigger and bigger and bigger, maybe take on some debt, take on some employees, and they may not be making any more money, maybe even less money, but they're taking on more stress, more overhead, things like that. And so sometimes it is the right answer and sometimes it's not the right answer. And you have to make the decision for yourself. But for me here, uh, we're gonna be expanding the farm and let me show you that. We're gonna be putting in a third tunnel here below the second tunnel. And if you've been following along on the channel, you definitely know that this has been a possibility since we built these tunnels here. We left the space here for it. We even ran the irrigation line past the tunnel. So when we had the need to add a tunnel, we were able to do that. And I wanted to make sure I waited until I absolutely needed it. And it's gonna be needed because I'm gonna take some time off from farming next summer. Uh, I don't know the exact timeline, maybe a month or so of not growing and then I'll be planting and starting things back up again. And there's a couple reasons for that, but the main reason, well, one of the two main reasons here is the temperature and the heat here in the summer. And I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is zone 7B, and I've talked to growers further south than me in Florida and Arizona, and actually even some in North Carolina that either take time off in the summer or, or are starting to consider it. And every summer is getting warmer, and it's you can call me a wimp or whatever, but I think frankly, 
the, the thing is that like I try to work with nature and not against it. So in the middle of summer here, it's usually over 90 degrees and humid every day. And I don't want to be out here working and the plants don't really want to be growing. As much as I try to, you know, use every technique I can to help them along, I grow a lot of lettuce and a lot of greens and they will grow, but like they don't taste as good. They don't look as good. And I don't want to be out here in the heat. And if any of you guys worked in the South in the heat, you guys understand. And there's those days that are really tough and you're like, man, I don't want to be doing this, but I don't know. This is what I'm going to do. So the other reason here is that, you know, my kids are in public school and they're uh, in year round school, which is very common in this part of the country. And they're going to be switching to traditional schools after next year. So they'll have the summers off and I want to hang out with them. And I tend to work all the time. So, you know, giving myself a little bit of a break in the summer will be fantastic. I can go traveling and hiking and camping and all that kind of fun stuff with them. And also I'll have more opportunity to do more filming in the summer because that's generally one people want me at their farms. They don't want me at their farms in the winter time. They want it when everything's going on. So it'll give me a lot more flexibility to do some filming and, uh, and things like that. But there's a lot of benefits to it. But before we get to that and talk about some of the things you might be concerned about, uh, we did pr start prepping out here already, which is really cool. So we did this ground prep uh, a little while ago. So let me kick it back to uh, past Josh. Thanks, future Josh. So we're down here at the end of where the third tunnel is going to be. And up behind the camera, the top maybe two thirds is really well sloped and graded and it's gonna work great. But down here has been the problem uh, really since I had my trees removed a couple years ago. This area has been a low spot. And as I walk down here, you can see how far down that goes here. And behind this area here, it actually kind of goes up a little bit. So a lot of the water collects here and this is a problem obviously for a lot of reasons. So what we need to do is get this whole thing smoothed out to where the tunnel is going to be and then continue this trench that goes below this tunnel out so it can drain. We're going to dig a new trench here which will go below the last tunnel. So my friend Jake is on his way over and if you remember he was in a video previously at Raleigh City Farm helping us dig trenches to run water lines and he's going to help us get this graded. Got this line drawn out here and this line is the top edge of the ditch that's going to go below the third tunnel and last time that we cut these trenches out we used a rotary plow and then shovels but Jake's bucket is three and a half feet wide so we're going to run that through here and hopefully use some of that dirt to fill in some of the low spots and have some dirt to work with so let's see how this goes. Got it created as much as I think we can right now and I'm really happy with this. It always looks like a mess when you're done doing rough grading. Uh, and part of the thing that's always been a problem on the property here, even before I had a farm, was drainage issues at the bottom here. And it just was never graded properly. And even after I pulled the trees out, it kind of got worse. So there's a couple things we had to do here. One is to fill in that hole, which I talked about here at the end of what's gonna be the third tunnel. Also to continue the trench out here between tunnel two and what will be tunnel three, that had a little bit of a hill and water was collecting there. And then this trench over here got uh, sort of rough cut out and we're gonna to have to go in and clean that up just a little bit. Uh, so I think we're gonna to try to let this dry out a little bit. Hopefully this is gonna allow a lot of the water to come out and get drained away. So hopefully this will dry out quite a bit. And then we'll come back in with a tiller and landscape break and sort of the same idea and tools that we did with uh, setting up the other tunnels and cleaning all that stuff up. But we needed to get this done here and just getting this water to move away and also just filling in this hole. So big, big, big thanks to Jake. Uh, always uh, fun to hang out with him and he loves to move dirt around, which is uh, <laughs> it's awesome when your friends want to help out like that. So really appreciate that. So we'll kick it back to uh, future Josh. Thanks, past Josh. Well, I'm really happy with how things started out here. The drainage has definitely been improved and the bottom area got nice and uh, leveled out to accept the tunnel. But I think the next step is really going to be to uh, come in here and till this and rake it as smooth as possible just to level the ground as best as possible and also to work on the ditch, try to get that cleaned up and looking really nice. And the timeline's a little bit flexible here because first of all, I don't need this tunnel right now, not until the winter time and I'll get more into that too. But there's a big constraint is that for a lot of you out there, you know this, that it's either really hard to get compost or impossible to get compost right now. And the company that I've been sourcing it from 
they're not even selling it right now because they, they can't keep up with their demand. And I, I reached out to them and asked them about getting more of the mixture that I got to build the beds, which was a 50% leaf mold and 50% compost mix, which has been working out really well. And I wanna get more of it, but it's not gonna be ready till like late October, early November, which actually works out pretty well. So what we'll do is I said, we'll cover crop this area just to build soil, keep the biology happy, and then we'll eventually tarp it and then build beds just as we did before. In terms of crops and other adjustments I'm gonna to have to make during the winter, we'll get to that eventually, but it'll probably be similar crops to what I'm growing now. I might add one or two other things depending on what the customers want, maybe stuff like you know full-size kale, maybe spinach, things like that. In terms of growing changes here, not much is gonna change. I grow year round anyways in the winter time and I usually use roll cover on the beds inside the tunnels when it gets really cold, but we'll get into all those details and stuff as we get towards the colder months. I'll have to make some adjustments with being able to drain the irrigation easily and all that kind of stuff, but I'll share it with you. The main reason though for needing a third tunnel is because as you probably know, things grow a lot more slowly in the winter time. Now, from talking to growers and just understanding how this all works, I've grown in the winter time and I understand that, but it's pretty easy to get produce through like November and December because of all your planting in the fall. The hardest months are gonna be February and March because things grow so slowly in December, right around the solstice in January and February. And so to get food into that, what's called like the hunger gap in like February and March, you have to plant a whole separate area probably in like October, November, and you have to give it a long time because even if you crop something out in let's say December or January, and you replant it, it's not gonna be ready in February and March because things grow so slowly. So basically, this tunnel, as I plant it out in the fall, probably in November, will be for that hunger gap in February and March. And that way I can hopefully have consistent produce throughout the winter time. Now, I'll also have a big push in the spring, which will be awesome because I'll be growing up through like harvesting, you know, through like May and June, which will be great. So I'll have another big push there. So overall, I think I'll be okay in terms of income. One of my concerns while thinking through this game plan and probably something you're thinking about too possibly is, hey Josh, like aren't you gonna lose customers if you don't deliver to them for a month or two in the summer? And it's definitely a possibility. And if it happens, I'll figure something else out. But I think in general, I have some great relationships with, with my customers and we'll continue to build those over the next year. And some of the chefs I worked with, I work with now, I've, I've known for years already. So that's, that's awesome. I also think that the kind of people that I'm working with are the people that care about working with someone like myself, a small local farmer. They are understanding the seasonality of, of crops and the lives of the farmers and really taking the time to understand what's going on. So I think it'll be okay, but we'll see what happens. Another thing about the summer here in Raleigh, traditionally, after talking to some of the chefs, they've told me that the summer is usually a little bit quieter because NC State's out of school, which is in Raleigh, and also a lot of the people that live around here tend to travel a lot more in the summer, go on vacation. So they'll be going to the beach or the mountains and things like that. So it's it's often tends to be a little bit slower. So anyways, it is what it is. In terms of the tunnel here, I'm gonna get uh, the same tunnels I already have. I have two of them. These are the 14 by 100 foot Gothic Pro tunnels from Farmer's Friend. I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check those out. I absolutely love them. I don't think I have any complaints and just makes sense to get another one. And that way everything's systemized and standardized and will work really well. And so we're just gonna continue that down the hill here, which I'm really excited about. Hopefully I got you, gave you some stuff to think about here. Uh, you know, for me personally, I don't come from a farming background and I don't have anything that I feel like I have to do. I kind of just make decisions on what I think is best for me and my family. And I think this is gonna be, I think it's gonna work out really well. I'm really excited about it. So food for thought, obviously. Maybe some of you guys are already thinking about this and maybe you have some encouragement to uh, start thinking about alternative plans or, you know, things like that. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you in the next one.